top of the class on the road And it's time to run it up, yeah, you know Maxed out, put the pedal to the floor, ayy, on the road Happy birthday to you <laughs> you know one of these is for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Look at his view. Chocolate blueberries. This is the equivalent of a birthday cake, in my opinion. That's it's excellent. Awesome. And look, chocolate blueberries with a view. I mean, come on. Guys, what a show! We just arrived here in Kintamani at Pingan. And as you can see behind me, there is a gong picking out behind her. There is Batur over there. And it's just stunning. We're not getting the perfect condition. I don't think the sun will pick through the clouds. But we still have an amazing location. So let's not waste any time and let's start flying the drone. So the first and most important tip is to find and pick the location wisely. I know some of you live in a country town or city, just trying to find a location that fits different drone movements and not only works at one time of the day. This location, for example, it's stunning at sunrise, but it doesn't really fit the vibe at sunset. So coming at sunrise is the best choice, obviously, as you will have the sunrise and then you can just drive around and just shoot different things around the crater around the volcanoes, which can make up your shot and give a more cinematic look. And remember, if you have a location that has different views and different ways of flying the drone, that would also step up your cinematic footage because you can have so many different shots and you can build a storyline with your videos. To make sure you get the most cinematic look out of your drone footage, settings are key. I shoot most of my footage at 5.7K at 24 frames per second, which gives me the most smooth cinematic look. I never really shot anything at 120 or 60 frames per second, just because usually I don't like to slow down drone footage, but I rather speed it up and do some speed ramps. So if I shoot at 24 frames per second, the motion blur and everything just looks better. I then make sure I have my shutter speed double my frame rate. And to do so, I usually keep my shutter speed at around 50. And you might ask yourself, how do you keep your shutter speed at 50 when you're actually shooting in daylight or anything else but sunset and sunrise? And that's why I use ND filters. ND filters are a lifesaver when you're shooting drone and cinematic footage in general, just because it allows you to keep the shutter speed down and keep that double the frame rate and have very, very smooth and natural looking motion blur. The last setting I always make sure is switch on is the scene light. Usually when you open a drone, when you have a new drone, it's gonna be a normal color which is basically a Rec 709 color, but this doesn't give you the best dynamic range, so I like to switch at this and like, just so everything is desaturated and it gives you the best dynamic range. So you can play a lot with colors and everything else in post-production. The last one is Port, and it's the one that I like the most, and the reason is because you can fly super fast, very close to objects, very low to the ground, and you'll be getting this very smooth motion blur effect. And just be careful when you use this mode because it doesn't have any sensors, so you can literally just fly the drone straight into a wall and it will not stop. So just make sure to be confident when you use this mode and why am I doing this with my hands. Just be careful and be confident if you use this mode and be responsible, don't fly into anyone or anything. But this is my favorite mode. But this is my favorite mode to get those very nice low to the ground shots. Very fast, tilting up the camera 